Hi, this is uh, Dan. I'm going to show you how a 4L80E transmission works without a computer. Um, this is a 1979 Chevy C30 dually, uh, originally equipped with a 4 speed SM465 manual transmission. And uh, I wasn't fond of that transmission from the perspective that I have a herniated disc in my back and uh, wasn't wasn't great to have to, to drive around. Um, my brother-in-law had a 4L80E transmission. Um, the truck's equipped with a small block Chevy. Um, I purchased a flex plate uh, for an automatic transmission, a large uh, ring gear. Um, I think it was 165 tooth and uh, unbolted the SM465. Uh, the clutch pedal is actually still there and bolted the 4L80E up. Um, I purchased uh, inexpensive, the cheapest I could find, um, con cable shifter for a console. Unfortunately, if you own a truck and you probably know that the shifter is going to be way too low to the floor to operate easily. So I, I fabricated a stand um, out of various angle iron and other pieces and welded it together to raise the shifter up. Um, of course the biggest question is, is how does the 4L80E actually shift? And I can tell you from personal first-hand experience that uh, 4L80E with no electronics hooked up to it at all will still have second gear and reverse. When the shifter is in the drive position, you will have second gear. When the shifter is in the reverse position, you will have reverse. So even if you were to do what I did and something malfunctioned, you're not stranded with the vehicle. Uh, you know, assuming you're not towing a really heavy load and you have to have first gear. Um, secondly, <clears throat> The, the transmission has two shift solenoids inside. It has um, another solenoid that controls the line pressure, and it has another solenoid that controls the torque converter lockup. Um, the line pressure solenoid is not a simple on and off. It's actually kind of like a pulsed, um, continuous uh, signal from the uh, computer and that signal is varied depending on how much line pressure is needed. When that is not connected to the transmission, the transmission runs at full line pressure all the time, which means you have um, somewhat harsher shifts, actually quite a bit harsher shifts. Um, it's really only noticeable when you're going up into second and down into second. Um, the other thing to, to know is that um, and something I was concerned about was what happens if I bump a switch when I'm going to do my shifting? Will the truck, you know, if I'm going at 55 miles an hour, will the truck actually downshift and, you know, cause me to be in an accident? The answer is no, um, because the solenoids don't cause the gear to actually hold. Like if you have a column shift and you want to put in first gear and you want it to hold in first gear, like if you're going down a hill. Um, they don't work like that. You still have to use a regular shifter which has to actuate the physical linkage in order for that function to work. Um, so you can be driving down the road at 100 miles an hour and shift it into first gear. I don't know if that would damage the transmission, but I can tell you that it won't, it won't uh, decelerate your vehicle. If you want to decelerate your vehicle with engine braking, you would need to use um, a, a manual shifter of some type. You'd have to control the linkage. Um, that being said, when the transmission is in fourth gear, when both solenoids are on, the shifter linkage <coughs> will actually control every gear except first. So if I want the truck to be in second gear, um, I can have the... Um, solenoids set for fourth gear. Okay, sorry about that, the camera uh, stopped. Anyhow, so what I was saying is that um, in order to control engine braking deceleration with your engine, 
you have to use mechanical linkage on the side of the transmission just like you would on a turbo 350 or turbo 400 um, if you want to decelerate in first gear you also have to use the solenoids if without the solenoids or, or with the transmission in fourth gear you can use the um, mechanical linkage to decelerate and use engine braking in fourth third and second if you want to decelerate into first gear you have to have the solenoids set for first gear <coughs> It's an A and a B solenoid um, in the transmission. There's also a line pressure solenoid. Um, when, the, when the transmission has no um, line pressure solenoid hookup, um, which is the case of this transmission, um, because I don't have the computer, uh, you have full line pressure all the time, which means you have a harsher shift. Upshift and downshift is harsher. Um, I'm gonna drive here in a second and I'm gonna illustrate that it's really not a huge deal. This is, uh, you know fairly heavy vehicle um, and it's you know it's it's not it's not terrible yeah it's definitely not a Cadillac um, I've driven in vehicles that shifted harder with shift kits than than this will um, and since you're since you're not typically decelerating when you're downshifting you don't feel the harshness of the downshift um, the transmission has uh, electronic speedometer output there's People that make kits that can drive a mechanical speedometer, you're gonna spend a pretty decent chunk of change to do that. Um, and yeah, it does suck because if you wanna keep your truck looking all stock, which I'm not, <laughs> obviously my truck wasn't stock to begin with when I bought it, so it, you know, it wasn't a big deal. Speedometer never worked. Um, what I have is an Android phone. Um, I purchased a used phone um, you can find them on Craigslist. You, you can literally buy pretty much the cheapest uh, Android phone as long as it's not broken. You do not need, in my experience, you do not need to have any kind of cell um, service on the phone. So the phone is literally not a phone anymore. It's just basically like a small computer. Um, you, you take the phone to where you can get Wi-Fi access, you sign on, and you can get an app called SpeedView Pro. I think it's about $2, 2 or $3, and it's a speedometer. And then I, you know, I have uh, you know, a little charger connected so it stays charged all the time. And I have uh, a little mount for it so it stays right in you know, eyesight. Um, I probably have 20 or thirty dollars invested into the speedometer here. Um, if you look, if you look around, you can definitely find old phones, especially like the original uh, Motorola Droid ones, for very cheap. You know, um, because they're they're fairly obsolete. They they work fine as a speedometer. So um, now I'm gonna uh, show you the um, the shifting um, solenoid A up. And solenoid B off or down is first gear. Solenoid B down or solenoid A down. Solenoid B down is second gear. Solenoid A down. Solenoid B up is third gear. And both solenoids on or up is fourth gear. So four, first, second, third, fourth. Um, and this is the um, uh, lockup torque converter. So I'm going to drive the vehicle now. It's, it's loud, that's why I wanted to show how everything worked. There's no computer in this vehicle at all. It's a carbureted engine. It's got an HEI. Um, you know, there's no, there's nothing magical going on. This is only a speedometer, doesn't do anything else. So, um, I just wanted to, to get the talking part out of the way because the rest of it's gonna be kinda loud. So, here. Okay, so trucks in first gear doesn't matter what gear it is when you do this you know it'll it'll be fine I mean I'm in gear now I can you know I can shift it doesn't matter okay so we're in first gear I take off here I'm I'm in some snow so I slip a little bit <laughs> okay Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, 
knock off. That's it. That's all there is. Uh, I'm in second gear right now. There's no engine braking because I haven't moved the, the selector. I'll go around this corner and accelerate up a hill. Just kind of show you what it's like. I don't know if you can see the speedometer. Um, 55 miles an hour is about um, 1700 RPMs or so. Third gear. Um, I'll show you what fourth gear and overdrive looks like at a low speed. So we're in fourth gear, uh, locked up. We're just over a thousand RPMs right now. So. Turn off the, the converter and you'll actually see the RPMs go up a little bit. There, we're in fourth gear. We're in third gear now. Second gear. Here's first gear. But because I don't have the, the transmission selected to downshift, if I did that, I'm in second with the selector. I'm going to slow down a little bit because I don't want the camera to fall when I shift into first. Comes up to stop sign. There's first gear. You feel the the shift. Uh, I'll shift manually with the the gear selector here, and you can kind of see what that's like. So we're in second gear now. The selector wasn't all the way down in the first. Sorry about the camera bumps around. All right, so second, third, fourth, third. That's how it works. That's all there is to it. Um, I'll give you the summary here when we 